Hey there, I wanted to talk today about how you could really get started doing email marketing and doing it really well. Maybe you have a big list of leads and you kind of don't really know what to do with them. Well, let me tell you what, email marketing is very important. It makes a huge difference. So if you start connecting with these people, if they get to know you, over time, you can be very sure that some of them will become customers and you already have them. You think they're already there. There's no need to find new people. But also, you have your website, you have your social media. The point there is to collect new leads, to collect new prospects. And then the question is, what do you do with them? Do we immediately try to sell something to them? That's probably not going to work. We're going to need to warm them up a little bit first. So to get to know you, what you are about, and then eventually lead up to that. So I got this question from a customer. And so I wanted to talk to you about the framework I, I gave her. So how you can start using that as well. So you know how to use email marketing in your business. So what we are going to talk about, I'll draw all this stuff out over here. But I'm first going to talk about the two different parts of email marketing. It's like a live part and a specific sequence. Then I'm going to talk about what do we actually write here? Because I know this is, this is a sticking point for many people. It takes a little bit of practice, but I'll give you some hints and some really good uh, an idea. The framework called chain of beliefs, which is really going to help you a lot here. And then we're going to also talk about there's actually way more that you can do if you're doing this writing work for these email newsletters, which makes it like 10 times more useful. So that's going to be super cool. And then a little bit about how you write well, and I'll maybe go into showing you specifically technically how to implement it. That's just going to be one example because the software you use might be different from mine, but I'll show you what I use and you'll sort of get the idea. Okay. So let's get started. Overview. Uh, so what we are going to talk about, there you go. Overview. We're going to talk about two things and there's the two big parts of newsletters. There's the live newsletter i'll give it like a very clear name so you remember it because many people call it different things and then a warm-up sequence so what's the difference here well the live newsletter is something that you sent kind of live as in today i want to write an email to all my people so i will type it out and i'll send it to everyone that's live everyone who is on your list at that point of time will receive the email the warm-up sequence, this is something that is pre-programmed, specifically meant to help people get to know you. So this might be you have a lead magnet, let's say you have an ebook or you have a small video training that you're giving to people for free in exchange for their email address. What are you going to send them? Well, of course, you're going to send them the thing that they asked for, but also you want them to get to know you. And so that will be a specific set of emails that you send them that can be very deliberately thought out. And we're going to talk about how to do that. And this will help them get to know you. And this might actually lead to a sale. I will kind of leave the sale part a little bit fake to leave it open for whatever it can be. In my case, I offer services for people. So this would be, I want them to get on a discovery call with me so we can figure out how I can help them. But if you're selling a product, you might actually lead up to selling that product. All right. So these are two parts and we'll talk about how you actually, when you're starting out, cause this is a lot to do, right? You like, fuck, do I need to write an email every week now? <laughs> Do I need to have 30, 40, 50 emails written out in the sequence? Like, oh, that's a mess. So uh, I'll talk to you how you do this. This is actually what I started doing recently because I wanted this warm-up sequence, but I didn't have it. I'm like, okay, how do I how do I get the people to know me and trust me and what I'm about? How do I filter out actually good leads and bad leads? This is this is how I started. I use this thing a tool, an exercise called the chain of beliefs. And the chain of beliefs is something where I notice that a lot of people, they, they sort of know it, but they never written it down. So if you've never done this, if you're like most people, then there you go. This is your chance. Uh, the chain of beliefs is this thing where you think about what does someone need to believe in order for them to have this conclusion that buying your service or your product or following up with you is the logical next step. So not a convincing, not this like, just like, well, of course I need to work with Marcel because he's an absolutely amazing designer. He writes 
things this stuff is beautiful it's automated it's just like just so many things and it's so good like of course i need to work with him that could be something for me and then you kind of think backwards okay what do they need to believe in order to believe that and then you can go back 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 all the way to what is the situation that my leads are in now for example i have one customer he uh they have a team building company. And so the situation that many customers of her are in is we're super chaotic. Our teams aren't communicating. We're losing so many, so much time because they just don't know how to talk to each other. And there's too many meetings, etc. People aren't productive. They're not engaged at their work. Like this is a mess. And then how do we get to the point where they want to start working with this company? This will... When you think about this, think about this in terms of big concepts and big ideas, because you have definitely a couple of things that are very unique to you. Something that is quite unique to me is how much importance I pay to making things that are beautiful. So in my warm up sequence, I have an email that says beauty matters. And I, it's sort of like a little manifesto on why I think beauty is so important. And this, A, filters out people because some people are not interested in that. That's fine. But B, the people who do really believe in that are much more engaged and interested in what I will be telling them after. For the team building company, an example there is, well, yes, they organize team building activities. But if you just do an activity here and there, then it's not really going to make them more productive and engaged and communicative over the long term like you need a strategy behind your team building so it's not just team building it's about actually building up a team and so that that concept of no it's building teams that could be an email and the reason i'm telling you to think about this is something that we'll talk about later <laughs> but think about this in terms of what are the big ideas what are the big concepts that are really important for your business, what you are about, and start just list out those things. Start start thinking about them. On the other hand, you can think about what do people really need to believe in in order to become my customer. And then you'll you'll quite quickly come up with this because you probably have thought about this. You've used it in your pictures. You've you know you basically know this. You just never really took the time to to write it down. While it is such a crucial piece of information for all the copywriting you're doing, all the marketing you're doing. So this is like. This is a super valuable exercise. I highly recommend that you do it. All right, so that's the chain of beliefs. That will be super useful for you. That will help you write out those emails. Now, how much emails do you send? How often? This is quite debatable. Um, you can send out a lot of emails. Most people are fine with getting an email per day from someone, but it's a lot to write, especially if you're starting out. So, and also depending if you're B2B, if you're selling to corporate, then maybe you don't want to overwhelm people too much because they already have too much emails. If you're selling to smaller businesses, there's usually a hustler entrepreneur right there who can <laughs> deal with more information. So this is something you need to think about a little bit for yourself. Don't be afraid of sending out a lot of emails. Definitely don't make them too short. Like you really need at least something like five emails or maybe 10, 20. This can, like, this can be one a week that you write 26 emails and you send it out over the course of a year. That's perfectly fine. It can take a long time for someone to really trust you. And like, it's very normal to have someone just follow you passively, not be there. And then suddenly a year later to pick up and start talking to you. So that's how we build this warm up sequence. What I would recommend as you're writing this, if you already have an audience on an email list, send it out. Just send it because they haven't received it. And later on, they will not receive it because it's only for the new people. Only they will get it. So already send it out to the people who are in there who know you because they might become customers as well. And also you will get feedback on it. You will receive when someone says, oh my God, that's so well written or, or thank you for this email. This is so true. If you want, depending on your email software, you can even add like a little feedback thing where people can give stars. That's all That's all very interesting. So that's the second part we were talking about here. And it's what do we talk about? So we were talking about the chain of beliefs, right? What do people need, need to believe so that buying from me Obvious. 
That's one. And then second is what are the big ideas or big concepts that are unique to my business. All right. So those are really two things that you can use to think about this. Just take out a document, write out a big list of what they are and sort them out, filter them out, take the best ones, and then you can start writing the actual emails. Okay, so that's for the warm-up sequence. Now for the live newsletter, of course, when you're starting out, just send these emails to the people as live newsletters. It's great, you start having a connection with them, they get super interesting information. This is like, you wanna have this more of in a educational type of context, but we'll talk about this in the, in the live part. This, uh, you can think about this uh, Seinfeld emails. <laughs> And this is like, don't worry too much about this. Uh, basically the point here is you take anything that happens in your life and you write about it. I wrote the other day, I wrote an email that people loved and it started off with today I ordered some new shirts and I was talking about how I changed the size because they're custom made. I changed the size like four or five times. And even though the previous sizing was okay, it looked pretty great, it still wasn't perfect. And so I had to adjust them a little bit. And the lesson from that is, if you want things to be perfect, you have to make them first. You can never know if it's perfect or not if you don't really try it. So these perfectionist people who are waiting to put something out before it's perfect, they're actually losing because they never will get to perfection because they never get the feedback and they never really try it. This was a pure informational email. I didn't pitch anything there, though I could have. The challenge here is you is is getting or or getting used to this thing of okay, I start with I bought some shirts, and then how do I transition that into selling my service? Well, in my case, it might be I might talk about something a back and forth of a website designer with someone. And we, that helped us figure out what their brand identity is like, what the feeling of their brand really is like. And then I pitch someone like, Hey, if you're interested in that, help on a call with me and let's chat. So this is sort of the, the arc you want to get into just seeing and noticing little things that are happening in your life and then connecting them with whatever product or service you're selling. This, this takes practice. This is just, you have to sit down and write and Maybe in the beginning, you only come up with an idea once every two weeks, but then after a while, you come up with an idea every two days because you just notice things happening around you all the time. Another interesting thing to talk about is client testimonials. You can say, oh, I was doing this yesterday with a customer and they asked me this question. So I thought I would answer it for everyone here because probably you have the same question. That's super valuable content. And you're implicitly telling everyone that this is what you're doing and that this is very valuable. Because something I notice a lot is that because I'm so much further ahead as in I've learned so much about all these topics that I'm helping people with, it's difficult for me to see what a beginner or someone who hasn't taken as much time in researching and learning and doing all this stuff. So sometimes it's difficult for me to get into someone's head. So listening to my customers' questions are a very useful thing to start with, which is like, that's the reason I'm <laughs> making this video because I had this question and I thought, well, there's probably more people struggling with this. So those are the Seinfeld emails. And that is just what you write about day to day. Don't worry too much about this. Just find something interesting that you find interesting, connect it with the business and send it out. Okay. So how do we, how do we structure these two things? So let's, let's, uh, let's talk about this. So let's a uh, little have this, these are your, uh, this is your email list, right? And so you have your little, uh, oops, come on computer. So you have your little, uh, live and you have, a up sequence. Okay. So, What happens? Basically, let's start with the sequence because this is kind of clear. Sorry, I need to move this away. Boop. All right, so this is new person signs up. So this can be a lead magnet that you're giving something in return 
or this can be someone who is just says they're interested. Maybe you gave a talk somewhere and they're like, oh yeah, I'd like to get to know this person. And they gave you their email address. So what happens then is you put them into the sequence. And the sequence is going to be an automation. So this is just has all the emails lined up and it's like, okay, in two days, we'll send them this email. In five days, we'll send them this email, et cetera, et cetera. Now, when the sequence is done, you basically put them on your normal email list. And then your live emails, this is just, you know, when does this happen? Basically every day, you know, or week or week or month. You, put, you send something to your live email and these are, you know, this is emails that you sent to your email list. This is not super clear diagram, but you get the idea <laughs> talking through this. It, now, the reason I do this first sequence and then put people on the list is that if you have a lot of emails in your sequence and you send a lot of live emails, it's maybe a little too much and it's maybe confusing that it's sort of two different vibes. So. It could be a good idea to just let people first go to the sequence and only them allow them basically to receive your live emails. You can also not bother too much and just send both of them at the same time. It depends a little bit on what your velocity, what your frequency is and how planned the sequence is. If your sequence is a 10 day sequence where you're telling a story over those 10 emails, then you might not want to distract your audience with the live things that are just random stuff that's happening throughout the day. I hope that's clear. All right, so one more thing before we move on to the implementation example is there's something more here, especially in these chain of beliefs and big ideas. And this is what's gonna make it so much more valuable than just this email, because you're thinking, there's so much work to write this all out and I don't want to do it and I'll give you a little trick to help you write this but uh, all of this this is really really good starter content this is really good for having people getting to know you so all those emails you're writing out I told you to think about concepts and ideas like what are the big ideas of your business write them down in your notes as concepts. I can actually show you this. Uh, this is sort of a little bit private, but uh, well, there we go. Concepts. This is just this is from my personal notes. This is just things I write for myself. These are all kinds of concepts that I picked up or I invented. And so if you keep sort of a list like this, I can just click into any of these and I you get into it and you sort of read what it's about. To have this list is extremely valuable because you will know what you are about and you always have this huge list of inspiration of things that you can actually write about. So taking the time to write out these newsletters and think about it in terms of concepts that you can reuse is super helpful because this can be the starting point for videos, for posts on LinkedIn or Instagram, short form videos, long form videos, like anything. So don't just let the writing go to waste. Don't write this in your email software and like let the text disappear, but keep it somewhere so you can still see it later. So you can still reuse it, so you can still give it to other people. For actually writing all this stuff, ChatGPT is actually pretty great at this. It's really good at summarizing things and refactoring it into a little different structure. So let's say you have your email and you ask ChatGPT, hey, can you turn this into five different tweets because it's a long email and there's like five ideas in it, right? Then you can schedule those things to be posted on your social media. So don't let that go to waste. And then what else you can do with that is use this as a starting point for your custom GPT. So if you're not using this, I will show you this right now. So in ChatGPT, I hope you're using ChatGPT. It's, it's a game changer. But you have this thing, my GPTs, which for some reason this button isn't working for me all the time. Okay, it's not working now. Okay, there we go. And so people make GPTs that help you with specific tasks, but you can make your own. So you can create it. And in here, let's say this one, I talked about this in another video. Let's go to edit. And this one has a whole description. This has the description of the business. 
And then here are some extra files with extra information. So this is from my notes. All these concepts, all these ideas, adds them like this in a custom GPT. And that way, when you need its help to write things for you, emails, social media posts, pitches, proposals, this chatbot already knows everything about the business. And because you took the time to write out great information about this, you're going to notice that the results you get from this are way better. So this is something that I recommend every business do it. You make a custom GPT that has all the information about your business available to it. Just throw everything in and you need some time to, to write it out. If you're not someone who's used to just writing down your thoughts and writing down what you're thinking about, this is something you're going to have to start doing, but then you put it in here and it's extremely valuable. And then one more chat GPT thing for actually writing those emails. If you're a little confused with that, I put all my rules or the things I think about when I'm writing an email, I put this into a little custom GPT so you can have it help you write out emails that are nice to read, that are engaging, that are story driven, all of that good stuff. I was pleasantly surprised. It was actually pretty decent. In general, I don't like chat GPT's copywriting, but this is pretty good when I give it enough rules, basically. So this is it. Uh, the resources are below. Oh, I wanted to show you the implementation, all right? So I use a tool called high level and in high level, it has a really good automation. So I'm here. Uh, basically you would start out with going to the sites form builder. And here you can have, I have an email newsletter sign up form where people can, they can fill it in and they are on my list. Then what I would do is I would create an automation here. I'm going to go through this real quick, by the way, uh, maybe it's difficult for you to follow. I just want you to get the rough idea of what we're doing here. Cause I'm not sure if you're using the software or not. Um, I recommend high level. It's a good software. It has a whole bunch of features that you need all in one package. It's definitely not perfect at neither of them, but everything is together in one place. So that sort of makes it really worth it. So I want this to start when someone fills in a form. So form submitted, which form form is newsletter sign up. Okay, great. So what happens then? Let me save this. I need to move myself out of the way. All right. So what happens then? Well, let's uh, email, let's send them an email. And here you would just fill this in email welcome. And you would write out something here, right? Just imagine you're doing it. Then you go to another one. Let's say we wait for, I don't know, we wait for three days. Then we go here, we add email, right? And you do this for months, <laughs> well, or just a couple of days. This might be something that you just do for the first five days when someone signs up to your email list, you may lose other signs up for something. This is something you need to decide. And it, it depends a lot on who specifically your audience is. Is it B2C? Is it B2B? Is it like corporate or smaller business? It also matters a lot what you're specifically going to write. So I, I taught you the chain of beliefs, but you can choose to do that either in a very story driven where the emails are tightly connected or woven into each other, or if they're kind of standalone and they can be read independently of each other, then you might have a little bit more space between those emails. So all of that matters a lot. Again, this is high level just to kind of show you what the process is like. It's not super complicated. You just kind of need to understand how it works. So I hope this was valuable to you. Let me know what else you would like to add to this. If you want me to talk about a little bit more things, different things, I'm here and I'm listening to you. So go crush it with love.